Welcome to Jack of All Trades 505. This is your host Joseph. If this is your first time here. Welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Uh, this is a uh, my latest project that I uh, that I completed while I was actually in isolation, battling a round of COVID. Uh, this is my second bout with COVID. I uh, suffered through it last year and uh, it hit me again this year. But uh, I was fortunate; only had mild sniffles and. Uh, I was able to recover very quickly, so I'm very grateful. But it did give me the opportunity to uh, work on this project. Uh, this is a freehand project. This is on 11 by 14 Artfinity um, synthesis paper. It's a synthetic paper, very much very similar to UPO paper. So it is erasable. It uh, does not really tolerate the blade too well, but uh, it does do all right depending on on how well you you can hold it uh the initial design was basically uh hand traced using uh carbon paper and a stylus uh and the original image was printed from two eight and a half by eleven or two and eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper taped together to create a roughly 11 by 16 image. Uh, this is uh, still what I is considered a stencil. Uh, it was drawn out beforehand, but I freehanded in the airbrushing without the use of freehand shields, really without the use of re freehand shields. This is mainly freehand, and that's it. So it is you know uh basically control of the airbrush is is where how i was able to achieve uh this image the black markings uh that were drawn in uh i was using uh, i should say i was using createx illustration color paints uh sprayed through an awada custom micron for the black uh Again, my pressure that I run, that I have coming from my regulator is at 45 PSI. I do have a Mac valve uh, G-Mac uh, from Grex that I have attached at the hose uh, just before the quick connect coupling so I can adjust the air pressure up or down as I need it. But for the most part, I usually run with my air pressure wide open and just use control of my my trigger control to to regulate how much paint comes out of the airbrush and uh really the the air pressure itself it could be at 45 it could be at 18 it's it really makes very very little difference to me unless the paint is super super diluted uh the paint that i did use in here was maybe reduced 10 percent uh, with just basic water. Uh, again, this is not, you know, um, because water does kind of break down the paint, the molecules of the paint and weakens the paint a little bit, that actually helps for the erasing process because uh, you will notice that I do utilize the Athmat electric eraser. Uh, I also use a uh, more aggressive pencil eraser uh, with a little brush on it and uh, a dowel. Uh, those are the main scratching tools that I use. I did use a little bit of scratching techniques with the razor blade, but that was only uh, towards the bottom uh, where I wasn't too concerned about tearing up the paper um, if, if it didn't work. Uh, so... Again, this is uh, just spraying lightly uh, with the dagger strokes starting at the base, tapering off towards the ends. Some hairs are shorter, some hairs are longer. Uh, you just have to look at your reference and, you know, try to draw them in. Basically, I used an overlapping zigzag pattern to create the black bands of the tiger. 
and uh, obviously longer strokes towards his chin area. But uh, this was, uh, that's essentially all it was uh, for the black using erasing techniques to pull back the highlights. Uh, now I am going in with the PS771 and the color is burnt sienna. Uh, mixed with a little bit of bright orange just to uh, make sure that the orange tones were prevalent. Uh, but I did like that darker tone of the burnt sienna. So that is that is the predominant uh, color in this uh, airbrush. Uh, and again, what I did, the way that I chose to to work these colorations is to work from the darkest areas in the black itself and try to fade it out from there. Um, near the nose area, uh, in the reference photo, it was actually very speckled and spotted. So what I did was I turned down the air pressure on the Mac valve on the airbrush itself because the 771 does have a, a its built own built-in Mac valve. And I was able to turn that pressure way down, and when I pulled back on the trigger, it speckled out and gave just the right effect that I was looking for. Uh, I do also utilize Drew Blair's Skin Texture Number 5 to achieve more of that uh, speckled kind of black dark marks in his fur that would be very difficult to try to spray in individually but with the use of that texture stencil it it makes it very quick and just is able to achieve uh, a a texture that would be again very difficult to emulate by hand so i do use uh stencils like i say uh in many at many times in many different pieces uh, it just depends on what aesthetic that i'm going for if i'm looking for a sharp edge if i'm looking for more of a natural uh, edge you know I'll, I'll stick to freehand if i'm looking for a sharper edge i'll, I'll go with the stencil but uh and and really that is the i think the 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 trick to photorealism is effectively transitioning from sharp to blurry uh, and uh, the way that our eyes kind of go from in focus to out of focus as we concentrate uh, i believe this uh, effect is called a baroque effect effect sorry uh, and uh, this you know basically gives you the the sharp focus point in the center and blurred towards the edges and uh so that's essentially what I was concentrating on, uh, keeping the focus really sharp and close uh, near his eyes, his nose, his mouth, and then getting a little looser once I started getting out towards the fringes of his hair and the marks towards the bottom. Uh, I will say that I did also use some burnt umber in the PS270, which is a 0.2 millimeter airbrush uh, again thinned down with just water and sprayed very very lightly just for tone and effect um, you're not really looking for coverage you're you're looking to uh, just give the illusion of these tones and shades that you see in front of you and try to reproduce it <laughs> you know try to trick the eye that they're looking at a three-dimensional object uh, or at least a photograph of a three-dimensional object even though this is a painting and uh you know if you know with photorealism i think that is kind of the uh the trick is is being able to to not quite tell that it's a painting but not tell if it's a photograph either i mean obviously if i could get it to the point where you could not tell the difference between my painting and a photograph that would be the perfect level of realism for me but that's just my personal preference some people still want to be able to tell that what they're looking at is a painting that it was created by somebody's hand uh and so a little bit of imperfections in the artwork 
uh, in the finish, those, those go a long way to telling a person that they're not looking at a photograph. So if you do have little mess ups, uh, you know, little parts that you have to correct or, or, uh, you know, don't, don't get so hung up on those, uh, you know, try to work through them and, and you should be able to, to achieve what you're looking, lo uh, looking to achieve. Like right here in the nose, uh, I was spraying in Scarlet with the Master Airbrush G44 and uh, it was coming out too watery. I had reduced it too much at first and it started to get a run so I erased it then went back and uh, you know thickened up my mixture, added more paint uh, to, to it and sprayed it in and was able to achieve the saturation that I wanted. Uh, then, uh, now you see that I've, uh, switched my attention to the eyes. Uh, this is a cerulean blue again, sprayed with the master airbrush G44. Uh, this is just, uh, the photo reference that I used, they had colored the tiger's eyes blue. And that's what attracted me to trying to paint this photo in the first place. So I wanted to reproduce that. Uh, just adding the same colors to the background and giving them some blur and to give it out of focus and to break up the white. But this is the final product. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, my ramblings didn't bore you too much and you were actually able to learn something. If you enjoyed what you see, please like, subscribe, and share it. And leave a comment on what you'd like to see next time. All right, I appreciate you and you have a good day. Thanks.